Greetings, everybody. <clears throat> Excuse me. Today we're going to talk about dividing polynomials of the form that you see here, which is a cubed plus b cubed or a cubed minus b cubed over a plus b or a minus b. Now you'll notice here that these are the sum and difference of two perfect cubes. Now in other places you might find methods for factoring the sum and difference of two cubes and well we're actually the objective of this video is to show you how to factor the sum and difference of perfect cubes using polynomial division. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take a look at a little problem. Okay, a simple one. Notice the numerator is the difference of two perfect cubes and you'll notice the denominator, each term of the denominator is the cube root of its perspective or its respective um, term in the numerator. Okay, so knowing poly polynomial division is actually a quick way to factor these, to learn how to factor. So we're just going to review the polynomial division process of this and then we will actually factor it. And I'll show you how to use that technique to determine factors in a few moments. Okay, so we're going to set up some polynomial division, x minus 3. Oops, sorry about that. A little correction here. Um, okay. X minus 3 divided by X, or divided into X cubed minus 27. Now remember, because there are terms missing in this polynomial, it's always handy to put placeholders in for them just using a zero coefficient like so. So you want to make sure you have all four terms of this polynomial present so that you can do the proper long division for it. Okay, so what we're going to do then is we're going to divide and we're going to do x into goes into x cubed x squared times. Notice I'm lining up like terms and that a lot of times helps students make sure they place things appropriately here in the bottom as you continue to your division. Okay, so we do x cubed times x I mean, x squared, time, x squared times x is x cubed, all right? And then we do x squared times negative 3 is minus 3x squared, okay? And then we, of course, subtract this. All right, so we do x cubed minus x cubed, it just goes away, and then that leaves us with 3x squared. And then we bring down the next couple of components, just like you would normally do in any long division problem. Okay, then you ask yourself, what would you multiply x by to get 3x squared? Or how many times does x go into 3x squared? Well, that is a positive 3x times, okay? So then we follow the pattern again. We do 3x times x gives me 3x squared. Okay, and then 3x times negative 3 gives me negative 9x. Okay, and then of course we subtract, and those will cancel out, and this becomes 9x, and then we bring down the 27 to continue the division. Now finally you ask yourself, how many times does x go into 9x, or divide into 9x, and that is positive 9x times. I mean, not positive 9 times, not 9x times. Forgive me there. All right. So we say 9. So 9 into times x is 9x. You know, follow the pattern again. Then negative 27. And then, of course, subtract again. And then these just cancel out. And you're left with no remainder here. So you get a zero remainder. And so this actually divides to equal the quotient, which is just x squared plus 3x plus 9. Okay, and if you do these correctly, there should be no remainder for this style of question, for these perfect cube questions that we're doing today. All right, so these two, t two statements are equivalent, that when you have this rational function it is equivalent to this polynomial. All right, so let's look at a second one, a little more complex. All right, this one's only slightly more difficult just because of the size of the numbers in the numerator, and you just have to be careful in your multiplication. 
So we do 2x, we set up, I'm sorry, we set up our polynomial division. So we say 2x plus 5 divided into 8x cubed plus, don't forget your placeholders again, squared, 0x plus 1, 2, 5. Okay? So now we do our division. We do 2 times into, goes into 8x cubed, 4x squared times. So then we do our multiplication. 4x squared times 2x is 8x cubed. Then 4x squared times this is positive 20x squared. And of course we subtract. We subtract and that these two terms subtract out and this becomes negative 20 x squared and then we bring down the remaining terms to continue our long division. All right, so now we ask ourselves, 2 goes into negative 20 x squared minus 10 x times. So we do negative 10 x times this, just repeating the process again, gives us our negative 20 x squared. And then negative 10 x times 5 is negative 50 x and of course we subtract again. Okay, those subtract out, and here we have an, a 50x, oh, let me fix that. Okay, so we have 50x, now remember this becomes 50 because this negative sign changes that sign, this sign when we do the subtraction. So the negative becomes a positive, and then we bring down the 125 because we haven't used it yet. Now we ask ourselves, what do we multiply, what would we multiply 2 by to get 50x, or how many times does 2x go into 50x? Well, that's 25 times. So we have a plus 25 up here. And so we do our multiplication again. 25 times 2x is 50x. Then 25 times 5 is 125. And finally, we subtract again, and both terms subtract out, so we get a zero remainder. And what that means is, is that this is the quotient of our subtraction, okay? So our answer to this, to this division, is 4x squared minus 10x plus 25, okay? Now, I want you to notice a little pattern here. If you'll take a look at the, our answer, our quotient, you'll notice that this number, or this term, is always this number squared. So notice 4x squared is the square of 2x. You'll notice the last number is, all, is this guy squared. And then the middle term is a little different, because the middle term is the product of these guys. You'll notice the product of 2x and 5 is 10x, but with an opposite sign. And that is a common pattern to this type of division. Now, let's take a look at what happens when we actually don't have the division statement, but we do want to factor something like x cubed plus 64. We can use the same exact technique. The only issue is, what do we actually divide by? Well, here's the easy part of this nature. We have to come up with the, the divisor to be able to get our factors when we're factoring this. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually, to get what I, to place the divisor in the denominator, to get the terms for it, I'm actually going to take this number and take its cube root. So we're going to take the cube root of x cubed, which is just plain x. And then we're going to take the cube root of this number, which is 4, and carry this sign down. And there we have what a div the divisor of our long division. Now remember, we are factoring now. We're going to factor. Use, we're going to use polynomial division to actually factor this. And the first step is figuring out what we're dividing by, the divisor. And that is by taking the cube root of each term, like I did here. So now we can quickly do the division. Now, if you recognize patterns and you can easily factor this without the division, go right ahead. But some people actually need the help, especially, you know, if it's been a while 
and you've forgotten the patterns, then you can quickly go through and set up this process to do it. Okay, so now we do X again, just like we did in the problem. We do X into this, all right, is X squared, all right, and then X times X is X cubed, and then plus 4X squared. And we subtract, and we get negative 4X squared here, and we bring down the other terms. All right, okay. So then you're asking yourself, well, what goes into 4X squared? Okay, what would go into this term? How many times does X go into this term? Well, we say negative 4X times, correct? Okay. So negative 4X squared, then do our multiplication, minus 16X, and subtract. And if we subtract again, we get negative, we get positive 16, I'm sorry there. We'll get a positive 16X plus 64. And then we ask ourselves, well, what will we multiply here by? Plus 16. Okay, and then we, of course, finish our division up, and that gives me 16x plus 64. We finish the problem, because you want to make sure you end up with no remainder here, because that is critical to the problem. If you do this and do not have a remainder, then you haven't factored it correctly. You haven't done the division correctly, and it should always end up with no remainder. Okay, so the final step, since we are factoring, is to write the two factors. Well, what are the two factors? Well, one of the factors is our divisor that we ended up putting here and here. So that's going to be x plus 4. One factor will always be the cube root of the two terms. And then the other factor is going to be our divisor here that we found. I mean, our, our quotient that we found, which is x squared minus 4x plus 16. And by doing that, you have just factored this okay so let's look at one more factoring question now this one is the most difficult of the day only because there's an extra little bit here with this y cubed notice an x cubed and a y cubed so that makes it a little more interesting in the process of figuring out what to do so the first step is like the last problem and we're going to actually take the cube root of this which is 5x and then the cube root of this which is 4y, okay? Now when we set up our division question, and this is where it becomes a little trickier, all right, and you have to be careful, but it's really not that bad as you write your divisor like normal. 5x minus 4y, okay? And then, of course, uh, let me erase that. That's bad penmanship. <laughs> all right, so... We write out our divisor remembering to put in our, what? Yes, placeholders, very good. So we say 125x cubed minus, all right, zero. Well, see, here's where it gets tricky because we have both x and y in this. So here we would still put the x squared like normal, okay? But then, because there's a y, we need to start counting up with the y's, the y exponents. So we put a y to the first. Notice the x exponents are going down, and then this term we start counting up with the y exponents. So then we do plus 0x to the first, and then y to the second. All right? And then finally, we put in our last term, because the x's have now counted down to 0 on their exponents, and the y's have counted up to 3 on their exponents, okay? And so that's how we set that up. Remember, in our exponents here, we count down with the x's and then count up with the y's like so, as we put in our placeholders, okay? Now, we go through the process of division just quickly. We say 5x goes into this. Well, that's how many times? 25, 25x squared times, okay? So we write that there, 25 x squared times. 
and then we do our multiplication. 25 times 5 is the 125x cubed, and then 25x squared times negative 4y is minus 100x squared y. You see how the placeholders match up and align with like terms. So then we, of course, subtract, and this becomes 100x squared y. So then we ask ourselves, well, what do we multiply 5x by, or what do we, how, how many times does 5x go into 100x squared? Why? Well, that's what? 20xy times. Okay. Oh, we forgot to bring down our other terms, didn't we? So let's bring those down and continue the process. Okay, so we're going to do this again. So we do 20xy times 5x, that's 100xy. And then 20xy times this is minus 80xy squared. See, it works out nicely for us. And then, of course, we subtract. Those cancel. That was supposed to be an 80 here, isn't it? Squeeze a little a, a zero in there. So that's minus or plus 80xy squared, and then bring down, of course, the negative 64y squared. So now we ask ourselves, how many times does 5x go into this? Well, that would be plus 16y squared times. All right, and so we write that out. So that's plus 80xy squared minus the 64y squared again, if we do the multiplication correctly. Cancels, and we get zero remainder like we're looking for. So what does that mean? Well, it means the factors of the original polynomial that we had, the x, 125x cubed minus 64y cubed, the factors of that are, remember you write the original divisor that we came up with, The original divisor is 5x minus 4y times this new quotient that we just developed through long division, 25x squared plus 20xy plus 16y squared. Okay, and that's my last example for today, so I'm going to leave you with that. Feel free to watch this video as many times as you need to figure these out. All right, have a good one.